Well, some of these I probably can't answer at all, and some of them actually um, would take me all day, and you really don't want to listen to me doing that, but I'll, I'll do my best to at least say something about it. One has got cost, more or less, for the benefits. That's a really, really important question, and it's what NICE ask us all the time. So their evaluation is entirely based on whether they think it's value for money. In other words, is how much we're paying for these drugs worth the benefit that patients get? And that's usually part of our job and yours to convince them that it is. So, so cost more or less, that's going to become more and more of an issue. The drugs we're using now are very expensive. Um, does exposure to certain amount of germs help build immunity? Not really. Um, so avoid them if you can but you certainly don't want to um, do so at the expense of having a normal life. So normal social interaction is good. Seeing your grandchildren, children, whatever is good. You don't want to live in a bubble. Um, I don't think you don't deliberately want to expose yourself to germs in the hope that it will increase your immunity. That's unlikely. You're better to have the immunization, which effectively does the same. Um, Roche has developed a drug called Gaziva, which is exactly, I'm afraid I was calling it abinutuzumab. It was GA101 before that. It's very confusing with the new drugs because they start off usually with a letter and number sequence. That's before they've um, got through the, the trials. They then get given a generic name, which in this case was abinutuzumab. The MAB at the end, M-A-B, means that it's a monoclonal antibody. So it's like rituximab and ofatumumab and alamtuzumab. As distinct to ibrutinib, idilalacib, which have an ib at the end, which means it's a small molecule inhibitor. So it's, that's the class of the drug that you're talking about. And then the bit before the MAB, the oo bit, is whether it's a humanized antibody or not. So, um, so, and then the front bit is the unique bit. So off, retux, abino, those are the unique bits. But uh, that's what Gaziva is. And then they go and call it something that you can't pronounce. Um, so I don't know, you'll hear people talking variously about GA101. Uh, getting a bad reaction to intersect bites, absolutely yes, a link to CLL. I don't know quite why. It's something to do with the immune reaction, I think, but it's such a common thing that I see patients describing it all the time. So do watch insect bites because they can get flare up quite nastily. Um, I don't know this one about HIV age, AIDS patients and immune boosters. I have no idea what they give them. They give them antiretroviral treatments, but that actually boosts their immune system because it restores the T cells. Um, the problem with uh, CLL is not so much the numbers of the T cells, but the fact that they don't function properly. And we don't have a drug that addresses that. Um, MRD uh, positive patients um, about survival. Well, again, it, that's very difficult because most of these endpoints that have been looked at are short ones. In other words, progression-free survival. So it's how long it takes before patients progress. And in the frontline setting, um, we don't have that data for MRD in the context of overall survival. So it's not, it's of interest because of the trials, but it's not something that's routinely done in practice. And I was talking to somebody else earlier about this. It's, it's very difficult because different people have used a different methodology with a different threshold. And it only has meaning when it's uniform within a trial where everybody's received the same treatment and they've all had the same test of their MRD, because then you can actually look at the differences. But a random test done outside, maybe using a different methodology, a different threshold, and a different treatment, you might not be able to interpret the results in the same way. So I um, uh, hope I didn't mislead you on that. Um, latest prognostic testing. We, I, could, I could fill a whole slide in very small print of all the prognostic markers that we could do. And I just fixed on the two that I think have current value, if you like, in, in practice. Um, we don't use them for staging the disease. We don't use them for directing um, a decision to treat. 
but the TP53 is the only one that's useful in deciding what to treat with. Um, SLL staging is usually, often um, will be staged like a low-grade lymphoma, although that's not correct. It should be treated in the same way as CLL. Um, pretty well all SLLs will be stage four if you stage them like a lymphoma because they virtually all have bone marrow involvement if you look for it. They may not have circulating CLL cells in the peripheral blood, although if you look hard enough, most CL SLL patients will, but they will have disease in the bone marrow. So it will always be stage four. So that's not very helpful really as a staging system. So it's best to stick with regarding it as, as CLL with a slightly different disease distribution. Um, how do you find out about your immune status? Well, the only test we routinely do of immune function are your immunoglobulins. And I, I'm sure you all get your immunoglobulins tested uh, in, in, in clinic visits. Um, that's really just a global measure. The real proof of your immune status is how well you are. If you aren't getting a lot of infections and you're keeping well, then you've certainly got enough immune fit state, you know, immune, immune status to an immune function to um, uh, um, keep going. So um, prognosis in terms of chromosome 13Q. Um, yes, there's a sort of interest has died down a little bit about 13, 13Q is the commonest of the abnormalities. If it occurs on its own, um, it's, it's regarded generally as a, a more favorable prognostic marker even when it's um, a biallelic deletion, which means it's deleted from both chromosomes. Um, although uh, there's a, there have been some reports in the literature suggesting that if it's biallelic, it's less good than if it's monallelic, just one chromosome. Uh, can the prognostic test be done on a blood test? All of these tests can be done on blood tests, provided there are CLL cells in the blood. So in the unusual patients who have SLL and don't have circulating cells in the blood, then you can't do these tests, but provided there are even a small number of CLL cells in the blood, all the tests that I've mentioned can be done on the blood. In fact, you know, uh, guidelines say it's not necessary to do a bone marrow to make the diagnosis of CLL um, or to, to do these prognostic markers. Um, it's really only necessary in the context of treatment or any sort of um, uncertainty about the diagnosis. And I think we'll come back to um, treatment options um, uh, in what I'm going to say uh, subsequently. Uh, do doctors read the CLL essay? Well, some doctors do, but probably not enough. <laughs> and maybe we should be giving them leaflets and directing them to do so if they work in the, in the area. Um, and uh, is CLL going up? I, I, I guess by that... Um, you, you mean are the numbers of patients with CLL increasing? Um, probably not so much on incidence, in other words, the num numbers of patients, but certainly in the terms of the prevalence, the numbers of patients who are still alive with CLL, yes, I think that is increasing because people are living longer. Um, and also uh, with an aging population, I guess there, there are more patients um, reaching the age perhaps where CLL would be diagnosed. Some of it will be artificial, just in that patients in their, you know, like didn't often have routine blood tests. Um, uh, now far more patients will have a routine blood test and so um, the disease will be identified in an otherwise healthy individual. And then the last question was about somebody uh, uh, taking part in the ADMIRE <coughs> trial uh, and are there any results. Um, that's a very good question and I wanted to reiterate how important the trials are. They're absolutely vital. We couldn't make any progress without them. We are totally dependent on your goodwill to participate in, in trials. And we're very, very mindful of that, that without um, your involvement, we couldn't do these very important trials. And thirdly, you're absolutely right. You, if you've participated in a trial, you have every um, right and expectation to know the results of that study. And we, we do try hard to do that through the website when the results are available. What you have to appreciate is that it can take a long time to report the results on a CLL trial, um, often because uh, you know, people do so well that it takes you years and years and years to even reach. If you look at the FCR data, 
50% of the patients are still in remission at five years. So you've already had to follow a very long time even to get a median progression-free survival. So we, we do have to do it. But in terms of the ADMAR trial, it will come out in, in, a, in a full publication at, at some point. But so far, um, abstract um, uh, publications Really what they showed, I think the important messages was one, that we're very good in this country at delivering FCR effectively and safely. So in both companion trials, ADMAR and Arctic, where the standard arm was FCR, we got extraordinarily good results and actually better than the results from the German study trial. And both from safety angle and from efficacy. So we know we can give it very safely in this country. This was trial which was done in lots of hospitals across the UK. So um, it's not just in the centres, this was across the UK. So that was one important thing. The addition of mitoxantrone did not uh, improve those results uh, at this point of the analysis. We've had no evidence that the addition of mitoxantrone improved the results. So, and that was one of the key questions on that trial. But I think the most important thing is that the patients did extraordinarily well on that trial. Uh, the response rates and the duration of responses have been really, really good. So you know, I hope you're one of those um, on that study who's, who's continuing to do well. 